Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back. I'm Jordan. This is my dad, Mike. And uh, we got another video for you guys. But first, we want to apologize for the slow content. Uh, you guys know if you guys have been a follower for some time now. Um, normally in the summer season, it gets a little hot for us. And uh, we don't really like tearing up people's yard because it's uh, brown spot is what it's called. Brown spot their yard. And some people don't mind it, but we just think it leaves a bad reputation on us. So we don't really like to do that too much. But um, so we got a pretty cool little video for you guys here today. And uh, dad was actually on Twitter and he got contacted from a new, well, I guess they're up and coming metal detecting company. And uh, as you guys know, our previous metal detecting company wanted us to do a review. We uh, were doing that and we've done that. And uh, they said, hey, if you guys would and wouldn't mind, do you mind doing the same thing? And we said, sure, as long as you don't mind giving our metal, uh, if we give your metal detector away at the end. So that's kind of what we're going to do with this metal detector too. I don't think the last one's shipped out yet, Dad, but uh, everything's kind of getting, getting going with that. Um, so yeah, uh, here's the review and maybe we'll just do the, the giveaway a little later, probably. Um, but the company itself is and I'll just get the box up here on the screen and then we'll get the box out but it's called Rico Max and the detector I'm not gonna lie it looks pretty freaking solid like I'd rock it but all right guys um here's the instructions we always everything we get we really we love reading the instructions <laughs> we just wing it I'm not gonna lie to you we wing it We'll get uh, we'll get the close-ups a little later, but right now we'll kind of just go through what's in the box. Dad, you know more about metal detectors than me, and uh, why don't you go ahead and run them through it? Well, I'm going to just read it off the box of all the different things. You know, for a, I think it's like $119 on Amazon. We'll put the link down here below in the description of the video. But this is what the box says. It says it has a large LCD displays and types of depth of the target that's nice i like type and depth the other one we did didn't have the depth on it but you know there's only so much you can expect but this one here is supposed to have the depth on it so that's a really big plus in my eyes it's got seven target categories adjustable sensitivity with having a max sensitivity sensitivity it's got three tones for different types of metals i like that back a backlight for use in the dark, a 10 inch waterproof search coil, just the search coil itself. And it's got the operation mode, adjustable volume. Even my AT Pro don't even have the adjustable volume. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so it's got a selectable disc where you can discriminate different things out. Pinpointing location, uh, low battery indicator, and it takes two nine volt batteries. So a good bit packed in that little detector. Whether or not how good it works, I'm not sure just yet, but then I even seen something here about activate your customer service now. Be wish you 24 seven. Be with you, be with you 24 seven. A two year warranty says 100% cover your purchase. So, wow, you know, for a $119 detector with a two-year warranty, that's pretty sweet. I mean, I'm surprised. Um, not to cut you off, Dad, but I was just thinking whenever you were going through that very pinpoint, pun intended, uh, in-depth, pun intended again, wow, uh, description of this detector. A lot of you guys are, you know, coming at us in the com comments like, hey, what detector should I start off with? I mean, honestly, I mean, that last detector wasn't bad. Like if you didn't want to spend, you know, 300 or 200 bucks on a detector and you just wanted to kind of keep it in the one Ben Frank range, you know what I mean? hundred dollar range. Um, I mean, that detector would have did okay. I mean, you wouldn't have been out here, you know, at the other advantage as people swinging the Equinox and the Simplex and the Garrett, but I mean, shoot, if you just want to go out and swing it, I mean, shoot, dude, I mean, you don't need nothing too expensive. My very first detector was the Bounty Hunter, and it was only $129. 
But I tell you what, I found a lot of cool items with that. I found my first Civil War bullets and everything with it. So it's not always in the amount that the detector cost. Sometimes it's just all depends on you. And another cool thing that was in this one, and unfortunately, probably when we, if we do give this away, I don't think this is going to go with it because I really like this little compact shovel. You know, when you're out and you go camping or whatever, this would work great. And I really like it. It's got a carry pouch that you can put right on your belt. So that right there in itself, I really like it the most, we'll honestly. We'll give you guys the detector. We'll keep the shovel. Right <laughs> we call it 50-50. When we go on that long hike up into the mountains, something like that will really work out nice. Hey, you say that and then it will snap off. Yeah, head. exactly. Who knows? But hey, let's get into this uh, detector, Dad. Why don't you go ahead and break it down? Or I'll break it down. Um, <laughs> looks like it comes in three pieces. No, okay, go ahead, bud. <laughs> no, it, it's standard. I mean, you got to put it together. And uh, like you said, three pieces, adjustable. I can see the adjustables there on it. The coil is very, very light. I'm kind of surprised on how light this coil is. Uh, it doesn't have a coil protector on it. And almost identical kind of setup as the previous one we, we reviewed. So just your general basic. We'll get a close up here of the, the actual head of the unit. It actually looks pretty cool. I like the look of it. Uh, it's supposed to have all your different settings. We'll see once it lights up. This has always been a favorite of mine. Just you get something new. I mean, it's just no longer new. Oh, that's beautiful. But anyways, it takes two nine vo volt batteries. It's got two slots for your nine volt batteries. It even has a phone head jack but I don't see the headphones, so you would probably have to buy that on your own accord. But it looks pretty nice. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. You get what you pay for it, you know? I, I'm not gonna try to sit, uh, sit here and sugarcoat a company. I'm hard to please. And if you're the company out there and you're looking for an honest review, I'm gonna give it to you. Feels a little cheap. But if you're getting into the hobby, let me tell you, Sometimes it doesn't matter about what it feels like. How do I put this thing together? Uh, Very confusing how to put together too. That's how no, I'm just kidding with y'all. Hold on, we'll get her put together. No. You know, it's not always about how it feels. It's gonna be what it does in the field. That's the big thing. Oh, wow, I like that. That was inspirational. I like that little adapter. Like that, that was pretty cool. But there it is. Besides the coil being on, you know, it, it, the ears on it almost just like the equinox you know it's a hard plastic yep so probably the next time you see this detector you'll probably see it in the field i got a silver quarter here a regular quarter a nickel dime penny and i also have civil war bullet nice barber quarter there I got that's silver but I'm going to get some signals and see how the detector reacts to it and then I'll give you a few things that I like about the detector and then a couple things that I don't think is so great or maybe could be made better we'll put it that way so without a lot of talking here I'm going to get directly into this uh the coil okay the coil is round as you can see you're not going to get anything in here. You're, none of your signals is going to be here. Your signals are going to be mostly around this edge here. So it's kind of funky. I like the uh, double D coils is my preference. But we're going to try this just to see how things go. It's got a couple nice things here. You know, the power one. It actually has got a backlight to it. There's the interface of it. I'm not sure how good it's coming up. But, uh, you know, you can set the, the sensitivity to how you want it, you know, different levels. You know, I always like myself, I like it pretty much maxed out if possible. It's got a depth meter on it, uh, a pinpoint button on it. 
and a headphone jack. So, oh, and a, like, I think I said the depth meter. That, to me, that's one of the important things. It's, it's tough when you dig something and you don't know if you're digging two inches or eight inches. So I always like a depth meter that works pretty good. Up here it says iron, aluminum, gold, bronze, silver. So they're saying that a lot of your, your coins, mostly your one, 50 cents, 25 cents, and 10 cents should be a high tone because this is a three tone machine. Gold and bronze should be down around your mid grade. And then iron and aluminum and pull tabs should be like your nickel, should be a low tone. It's kind of surprising to see aluminum down as a low tone. That's usually a pretty high tone usually. But let's go ahead and get started. All right, first thing I'm going to start out with, this is actually a starred bullet, worse than Arsenal Civil War three ringer. We find a lot of them, so that was one of the reasons I chose that. Let's see how it comes up on the detector. Okay, it's coming up around pretty solid, one cent in the bronze area. And it, it's a decent signal. I mean, it's solid. You know, I would definitely dig that. So it's going to be in your bronzies area. All right, next thing we're going to try is a quarter. Just a regular quarter. Sometimes I see it coming up here really high. There we go. Seems like it gets the best reading about right in here. Is back where it seems like to be, as they would say, your sweet spot. I'm getting a pretty good reading on that quarter, actually. And it's coming up in the high range, right around the quarter range. I like that signal. That's a pretty good, sweet little signal right there, honestly. Let's do a silver quarter. Everybody loves to dig silver. So let's sound what, see what silver sounds like. Huh. Kind of disappointed on that silver signal. You hear every once in a great while, you'll hear that high tone. But it's not every time. That's kind of weird. It's coming up more of a mid tone than it is the high tone. I don't like that because I like my silver to scream. But sometimes it's there. You can hear that high pitch every now and again. But I, the, the regular quarter, you actually got that high pitch. Here, it's just occasionally. So that's kind of, kind of a shame there. All right, let's try this penny. This is a 1979, it's actually a wheat set. So this is gonna be an all copper penny. Let's hear what it sounds like. It almost sounds like that silver coin. You hear the, you hear a high tone every now and again, but it does have a, a regular tone to it. That's mostly saying one cent. So, you know, pretty decent tone for a one cent piece this is just a standard dime sounds like it's having some issues picking up the dime i don't know why i'm right on top of the dime i mean it hits it every now and again but it's coming up really low almost in the iron grunt let's try the last one we got here which is a nickel See what comes up on this. There we go. It likes the nickels. It's liking the nickel. And it's actually re registering nickel pool tab. So that's pretty good. So we know the machine likes a nickel. The silver quarter I wish was a little bit better. I like, like I told you earlier, I like my silver to really pop when you hear it. And for some reason, it's not really picking up great on the, on the silver quarter. But the regular quarter, it hops on it pretty good. It did really well on the Civil War bullet. And it also did really well on the nickel. So now we're going to get ready. We're just going to do a little uh, air test of it. By no means does an air test mean anything in depth. Whenever you're digging something in the ground, 
you could probably cut it two or three inches off the air test for the most part when some things depending on how it's laying if a queen's laying edge up you know you're not going to get complete depth out of it so i'm just going to do a regular air test and just see what kind of signals and how deep it'll pick up these five different six different things here we got on this table we're going to start out with a civil war bullet a silver quarter regular quarter dime nickel and then finish up with a wheat set so let's just see what kind of depth we can get out of this machine okay three inches for the civil war bullet and I have the machine on max sensitivity. So three inches on the Civil War bullet. All right, now let's do barber quarter. Okay, it did pretty good with the barber, and it actually sounded a little different th differently there. You're looking at five inches on the barber quarter. And like I said, now I ain't doing anything on edge. I'm doing everything by round. Here is a regular standard quarter. As you can see, the tone changed there. Listen to this. As you get away from the coil, it changes. I hope you can hear that. Sorry, I got a lot of traffic going back to the baseball field. But anyways, let's go ahead and get this air test for the quarter. So about four and a half inches on the regular quarter. Here is a dime. It's about three inches on a dime. Uh, about a four and a half inch again. And then lastly, let's do the wheat scent. Wow. Actually does fairly decent on the wheat scent. Kind of surprising. It's almost got about the most is a little over five inches so you can see silver war bullet three inches three inch dime quarter standard quarter and a nickel about four and a half inches a barber quarter was all the way up to five inches and the wheat scent was five and a half inches so not bad on the wheat scent i'm kind of disappointed in the three inch for the Civil War bullet. Eh, I'll give it benefit of the doubt. It's about, about four inches on the, on the Civil War bullet. So you can see, you know, in rough conditions out there, you know, it, the detector would struggle to pick this up. You gotta remember, this is a starter detector. You're looking at a, about a $129, $139 detector. So you got to remember, you get what you pay for. This would be a, probably a good starter for a, uh, a kid or even an adult. It would be a good starter if you're not wanting to put a lot of money into a machine. Here's the actual review of the detector. What I feel, this is my opinion. You know, they didn't pay for an opinion or anything like that. This is just my honest opinion. You know, if I don't like something, I'm going to let you know, you know, I don't like it. We'll start with the good points. You know, the, the machine does actually have some good points. One good point is, this is probably one of the lightest detectors I've ever lifted since I've been metal detecting. Very, very light. Another thing that's not really that big of a deal, but I do like the handle. I think that looks pretty sharp. I know Jordan would like something like that. And I like these kind of plugins. And it's not waterproof, so this plugin would not work for a waterproof detector, but it just plugs in very nice and easy. 
how wide the armband is up here. You know, quite a few, you know, I'm probably a little over average size. So you got plenty of room in the, in the shoulder area. Uh, I like that it has three tones. I always, I usually always try to run three tones. Even on my simplex, I run three tones most of the time. Uh, and as I said earlier, it's got a depth meter. That is, for me, a must for a metal detector. It must have a, a depth reader. Uh, it has where you can notch out. You know, you can notch different things out. I very rarely notch out unless we're looking for gold rings in particular or something like that. Now let's do some of the things that I see where maybe they could upgrade or get a little bit better on the machine. For one thing, it didn't have a ground balance. So no matter where you're at, if you're on the beach, you're in, in the water. You can even be in the water all the way up to the control box. Uh, you're in very heavily soiled or heavily mineralized soil. You can't ground balance it. You're stuck whatever they got you set at factory. I don't like that. Uh, I don't know how well you'll be able to see this on the screen, but the actual screen of the detector itself is almost made out of like a hard plastic. That right there really would scare me a lot. Not being like a glass face or even a hard plastic. This is just a very soft plastic, which like I said, would definitely scare me. Uh, the stoutness of it, you know, it'll, it, it does okay. It's not bad in that aspect. My biggest thing is the screen. And then as we did the testing, you heard um, the different signals, like the dime. It had troubles picking up the dime. That kind of surprised me. The depth. Uh, the best depth was, I think, the nickel, or no, it was the penny. And it was about five and a half inches. That's not very deep. Um, you know, when we're digging our silver, usually they're anywhere from six to eight inches, probably. So, you know, if I'm out in an old home site, I'd be worried about depth that I'm getting out of this machine. But if you're in the park, you know, a lot of stuff is dropped in the park yearly you know you might be able to find some pretty cool items a lot of parks you can't even use a shovel in you got to use a screwdriver or whatever so a park it would work good probably at a beach it would work nice because you know a lot of stuff could be close to the top so the biggest downfalls is is the screen no ground balance and the depth i'm getting out of the machine other than that you know for $129, you know, the machine will do okay. It'll do okay for you. But if you're expecting to dig or, you know, dig the older relics and the deeper coins, you're probably going to stay away from a new beginning machine like this. You know, you'd probably want to go and go towards a simplex or, you know, just something that you're going to know you're going to get depth out of. But overall, you know, if I had to grade this machine, I'd probably give it about a B just because, you know, it, it does what it, it's supposed to do. It's a, you know, a newbie detector and it does what it's supposed to do. You can't expect it to act like a thousand dollar machine. But anyways, guys, if, if you enjoy this kind of video with the reviews and seeing the reviews, you know, give us a thumbs up. You know, we appreciate the thumbs up. Uh, we appreciate the comments. I love seeing comments. I love responding to comments. You know, some of them's even bad comments, and I still try to be nice to comments that's even bad. You know, some people just don't like what you do, and, and I'm okay with that. We're just here having fun. You know, I've been doing this now for 10 years, and I enjoy it. Whether I had YouTube or don't have YouTube, I'd still be metal detected, and I'd still enjoy it. But Jordan and I are trying to get things a little bit better. And if you got any suggestions, feel free to give us some suggestions on what you'd like to see. If you'd like to see us put some different kind of content in here that, that's metal detecting related. It's got to be metal detecting related. You know, give us, you know, what you'd like to see. And we'll see what we can do. You know, we're here to have fun and hopefully engage with you guys. That's what it's all about. So, till next time, 
I'm out of here. I'm going home and getting something to eat. Thanks for watching.